Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, Learn at Cloud Analytics. So in this section, we would be talking about what is GitLab and we'll try to introduce ourselves with uh, the Git and GitLab. And we'll also try to uh, register for GitLab and uh, the process that is uh, required to set up an account for GitLab. And we'll also see some basic uh, uh, overview about this topic, okay? so. In this session, uh, we will be talking about what is GitLab and then we'll try to create an account on GitLab and we'll also try to create a new project on GitLab. So let's get started. So the first step that we would be doing here uh, today is let's understand what is meant by Git. So Git is a version control system. which would allow us to locally track changes in our respective project or folder. And this would also allow us to push or pull changes from remote repositories like GitHub, Bitbucket or GitLab. Okay. So uh, what is Git? So Git is a version control system which would allow us to locally track the changes in our respective project and also help us to push or pull the changes from the, rem uh, from the respective remote repositories like GitHub, Bitbucket and GitLab. Now, uh, what is meant by GitLab? So GitLab, GitHub, Bitbucket, these are all uh, providing a similar properties. And these are services that allow us to host a project on a remote repository with some additional features. So this would allow us to help with uh, CI, CD and uh, software development lifecycle. So uh, let me just put it down here. So these are services that allows us to host our project on a remote rep repository and have additional features to help in software development lifecycle. and continuous integration and continuous deployment. Okay, so Git is a version control system that would allow us to track our changes in the project and push or pull, uh, pull the changes from the remote uh, repositories like GitHub, Bitbucket and GitLab. And uh, these three are the services that would allow us to host a project on a remote repo with some additional features to help with SDLC and CICD process. Okay, so what are the different features? So um, when we talk about the different features, there are like managing your project, or users, etc. Sharing your code. Maybe in terms of documentation, wiki or uh, any uh, documentation services. This would also allow us with the bug tracking in the documentation or in the code and with the CI CD process. So all these services would be provided by or can be provided by GitLab, GitHub, and Bitbucket. And these are cloud services. Okay. So we will go slowly step by step to fully understand GitLab. And we'll try to create as many examples as we can in this complete series. So uh, now let's go step by step. So to begin with, we will uh, initiate with the first step, which is 
go to github dot uh, gitlab dot com and create an account. So let's quickly go to the uh, GitLab. So if you enter GitLab on your Google, uh, so you would be uh, provided with all the different uh, information. So I'll just access to this GitLab uh, website. And on the top right corner where you see login or register, we just need to hit on register and provider details. So I'll just say, and I'll give my uh, username as well. And a password. And I'll just select this checkbox saying that I'm not a robo. And then I'll hit on register. Now, the moment I hit on register, GitLab would have sent me an email for registration confirmation. So I'll just quickly navigate to my uh, mail account and hit on the confirmation. So I'm doing it on my mobile. Um, so once this is done, uh, we will come back to this page and see the interface of GitLab. So uh, I'm I'm trying to sign it. So I've selected activate, and uh, it's just asking me to uh, uh, sign in. And uh, okay, so now. Okay, so what I would do is I'll just uh, refresh this and uh, I'll go back to uh, GitLab. GitLab.com and I'll try to log in. And I'll just uh, provide my credentials which we've used um, while creating this account and then hit on sign in. Um, Okay, so now this is our home page uh, where we can get to see different options. So on the left top corner, you get to see the menu. So if you um, open this menu, we get to see the different items being listed here. So one of which is the projects. So this is the place where we actually store our code and everything. So we'll see how to create a project. And uh, so there are two ways of creating a project, which is uh, uh, either by navigating here and selecting uh, this uh, create, create new project from this uh, uh, drop down, or there is also a plus sign uh, next to this uh, search and you can just click on this and then you can create a new project. Okay, so in either ways we are allowed to create a new project and directly you can also hit on this create a new project and that would also help us to create a project. So uh, let's come back to our presentation. So the second step that we perform today is sign into GitLab. So the third uh, process here is, so let's create a project, create a new project on GitLab. So we'll go back to this and I will say create a project and I'll just say create a blank project and um, in the project name, I'll just say my first project. And if needed, you can just give a description about this project, like uh, what uh, does this project relate to and everything. If you would like to give some description, which might help be, uh, might be helpful for future reference, you can give it a description. And you can also select the deployment target if that is uh, relevant. You can choose uh, what is your deployment target. 
and uh, coming to the visibility level you can choose between private and public so private means uh, if you intend to keep this within your access you can just keep it as private which is the default option else if you'd like to share it with rest of the other uh, users you can select public so it would not uh, restrict by any sort of authentication and um, and regarding the project configuration, there are uh, different options being listed here. The first one being uh, if you'd like to have a readme as an initialized repository, by default, you can enable this uh, tick box, uh, checkbox, else you can just uh, disable it. And uh, there is also another option regarding the uh, static application security testing. So we will discuss about these things in detail as we go in the next uh, session of the series. So for now, I'll just leave the uh, selections as is and just hit on uh, create project. So I'll so once I hit on create project, uh, it gives us a, a pop up, uh, which is a warning icon. And it says that uh, we cannot push or pull the repositories using SSH until we add a SSH key to a profile. So this is very simple. So we'll see this as we go along in the next session and uh, we should be able to add an SSH key. Okay, so for now we can just ignore it. And as you go through the uh, my first project details, um, so you, you can just save this uh, uh, URL. So this is your URL to navigate your uh, first project that we've just created. Or uh, if you come back to this clone, you can just select this clone. And uh, there are uh, two options within the clone, which is uh, the first one is with SSH. And the second, uh, uh, second one is with HTTPS. So you can just uh, copy either of them as per your requirement and then you can use it for your deployment purpose. Okay, so this is how uh, you could uh, register an account with GitLab and sign into GitLab and create a new project. Thank you.